Hey, what's going on, Grit and Grace? Oh my God, this this show couldn't have come soon enough today. And uh, you'll you'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a moment. But first, I want to say welcome to my cohort, the amazing, the beautiful, the most thought provoking cohort that a person can have, Lynn Burnett. Thank you for uh, thank you for bringing this up. Hey, hey. Well, yeah, it just kind of fit in, and it's such a serious day. I couldn't even really bring myself to do work. I just thought, I don't even want to do anything. It didn't feel like I should be putting anything out there in relation to what I do. I Just what a wonky day. What a wonky day. And um, I think like a lot of people, I just want to talk about what's happening. So... Absolutely. And there's been a lot of talk all over social media, whether it be Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. I, I mean, it's just, it's insane. The, the change in the social media uh, atmosphere over the course of the last 24 hours, it's no, it's been changing kind of rapidly over the course of the last week, but even in the last 24 hours with, with the Las Vegas shooting and things like that, I think it brought to brought to the surface some of those old pains that we feel every time something like this happens. You look at what what happened during the school shootings. Um, what was it about a week ago? There was a, 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 a an attack at a sporting event, even up in Canada. So you you look at all these things that are going on in the world, and you can't help but want to take on the responsibility of bringing awareness to everybody that you can possibly uh, touch. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for you and I, our thing has always been with this show is Hawk to not back down from serious issues. Um, you know, I think in times like this, this is when people want to talk. So, and this is the place where we want to engage in conversation. So, you know, please share this out if you're watching with us. Uh, please share this out so we can get some more conversation. And our, you know, <clears throat> the thing with CJ and I is we're very much, we're solution focused. We want to discuss things. We're not reactive. Well, sometimes we can be a little reactive, but we check ourselves quite quickly. <laughs> you know, we're human and uh, we're, you know, so. <laughs> but we want blood. to have a. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, we got blood pumping. We want to have conversations. And this is why we started this show is to have conversations and to allow you to join us to share your perspective. But our big thing is. We need to get beyond the superficial level of listening to other people because I see too many posts on social media and, you know, there are times and I'm, <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the, I know I'm not the only one where I start commenting on a post and social media, I will write this post and I just completely delete it and scroll on because there's sometimes it you know that it's not going to do anything. We want this show to be a place that we can share our opinions and go beyond the superficial reactive listening. We, it's our responsibility to gather information, to sit back and, and actually listen to something and not be reactive from our beliefs and our point of views because you know, as many people as there are, that's how many point of views and beliefs that we have. We all have different backgrounds. We all grew up differently. We all had so many different influences. And so we want this show to be a place where we can talk about it because when there are shitty things going on, that's when people talk. So let's talk about it. Let's have a, a, an engaged, thought-provoking discussion. And so please share this out. Please share this out so that people can be heard because that also adds, I think, to the disconnect in conversation is that people want, we all want to be heard. And, but people are so busy yelling and calling names and it's, it's, 
it's sad. We are in an intelligent species. So let's show that and not just be reactive. Let's let's take the time to actually listen. And, and this is good because CJ, where you live and where I live, two totally different you know, we have different backgrounds growing up and, you know, you're a man, I'm a woman, I live in Canada, you live in the state in the mid. So, you know, where we grew up differently, we're going to have different ideals. And, and I love that we can talk about things. And we are doing that earlier today in chat. And, you know, so this is perfect how two people can come together and talk and listen. And the crazy thing is, is uh, you know, over the course of the past few months, people have gotten used to us maybe agreeing on pretty much everything that we talk about. Um, and, you know, yeah. we've had some disagreements, but they've been so minimal and so slight that you really probably glaze over them and don't even notice them. But on this issue alone, I think this is probably one of the spaces where you and I had our, our largest, not, I don't want to say disconnect, because I think we both understood where the other was coming from and why that they formed the opinion that they did. It's, mm -hmm. it's that we come from two very different, like you were saying, two very different backgrounds that kind of, uh, I would say helped us develop our opinion in the way that it has. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of got after our conversations today and uh, I, you know, I might actually have to bring a couple of those points up that you made because they're they're very good, and they they actually made me sit back and and think a little bit about my position. It's and it's like what I what I brought up before about using your opinion as a defense mechanism for self righteousness versus using your opinion as a way to inform and and put your point across but yet be open to other point of views and things like that. So that's really kind of what this is about. Just keep an open mind, but please do share your opinion. We would love to be able to talk about your opinion and not that it's right or wrong or, or, or indifferent. It's your opinion. So that's, that's kind of where we're coming at today with this show. We want to start the, com the communication. We want to, we want people to open up their minds to, to accepting potential solutions and, you know, different opinions coming together is, is a powerful way to, to start formulating solutions that could in the long term, not maybe tomorrow, but the long term could definitely be something that we could all get behind. Yeah, and I mean, and we don't, like I said to you today, I mean, this show isn't going to change any laws, absolutely. But I think that we get to a point where we get so distraught and frustrated and and we think, oh, my God. I, so I, I'm going to I want to share my perspective because I'm essentially an outsider. Uh <laughs> I live in Canada. I'm on the outside. I'm looking in. And a lot of the people I know share the same opinion that when we see something like this happen, we're like, you got, when are you going to get it? Right? Like what, like, I don't understand. Why do you need a gun to live your life? You know, yes, we have guns up here. I have a lot of people that I know that hunt. Um, I, I don't have a gun. My dad had a couple guns, but they were more souvenirs when he was a kid because he grew up on a farm. They did a lot of hunting and bears and they sat in the back of his closet. So it's not like I never had that around, but he never pulled it out or used it or anything. Um, so my son, who's 16, several years ago, I brought him to a shooting range so he could be taught how to shoot a gun. So it's not like, you know, I'm totally anti-gun. But and I'm definitely not an expert on it, but I, I just feel so like I don't understand. I don't understand. But I think in thinking about it today and us chatting briefly that uh, I, I think that the U.S. Is a, is a totally different culture because I'm looking at different things like Australia, for example. So you know, what they did back 96, 97, and they had that mass uh, gun buyback program, 
and they eliminate, you know, suicide rates and homicide rates dropped dramatically. And even in the years since then to now, the buying of guns from the people that live there still has not gotten anywhere close to the 650,000 guns that were taken off. So, but I think that it's a, it's a way different culture and that what works for one place, I can understand how that would not work in the US. It's a because it's a different culture. Just like, you know, what we do here wouldn't be the same. As much as we're so similar, you know, we have the same TV and music as you guys. I mean, you know, we play the same video games and all that stuff. We drive the same cars, we drive on the same side of the road. But it's a different culture and I think that's how we have to look begin to look at it, I think. For me, that's what I see. To try and understand because it is so easy for it to go you know my first reaction was and you guys still want to argue your right to bear arms I don't understand that like but I'm trying to think about that but the right to bear arms versus the right to use these arms are two different things I mean that we're we need to be clear on the terminology first of all the rifles that they're talking about as far as banning are the, the high capacity assault weapons that do the most damage. Uh, the, the gentleman that was uh, out just hunting coyotes with an AR-15, chances are he's got a 15, possibly even a 30 round magazine, but most likely he's probably got a 15 round magazine and he's hunting coyotes with an AR-15. Now, those people who commit mass homicide, they're using the same platform of weapon. However, they're modifying them in a way that allows them to shoot more rounds per second. So the, the, the term assault rifle doesn't necessarily, it's, it's kind of been a, a broad capture all. Anything that looks like this type of a weapon is an assault rifle when that's not really the case. What turns a weapon into an assault rifle is modifying it. Now, yeah. there's there's a lot of people that will argue that no, that's not true, that's not right. It's you know, it looks like a, a military weapon, it's an assault rifle. Well, if that's the case, you know, uh, a a hunting rifle, which is like the in the in the army, it's the M21, in the Marines, it's the M24, and it's it's a standard 308 hunting rifle. That's been mat. That's been uh, uh, fitted with a match barrel, so it's more accurate for snipers. There's a lot of people that do that as well for their hunting rifles. They'll do the same type of modifications. Does that turn that one into an assault rifle? Well, by the by the definition that I just laid out, modifying a weapon, then yes, it does. But yet, it still only has a five round capacity. And it can do just as much damage. You can hit out to a thousand yards versus say 500 yards. So mm-hmm. the, the language has to be clear. And that's part of the problem with gun control here in the United States. The language is not clear. They say gun control. So gun control starts with rifles, shotguns, handguns, any type of weapon that fires a projectile by means of a center fire or rim fire discharge of black of, of gunpowder. So that's where we have this big disconnect. You got guys that never owned a rifle in their lives. They have shotguns that they use for hunting purposes only, but all of a sudden they fall into that, that category of people that need to have their guns taken away. So that's where the problem is. It's in the language that they're using. Yeah, so based on the language, no, I don't believe in gun control. I don't believe that it will ever work. And the reason why it won't work is because you have way more people. There's over 300 million guns in the United States that belong to an individual or belong to individuals. It's it's going to be real difficult to track down all of those guns because those are the oh, ones for that sure. That's not including the ones that they don't know of, the, the, the guns that are in the hands of criminals and, and the people who, even law-abiding citizens who own firearms that are not registered. 
they're out there as well. So the disconnect becomes what are we really arguing about? Are we arguing about stopping criminal activity or are we arguing about taking guns away from everybody? Well, if you start taking them away from everybody, you're not going to be able to get them from the hands of criminals. It's just not going to happen. They're still going to obtain them through the means that they've been getting them right now. So, Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, you had mentioned earlier about drive-by shootings. You know, where we live, I, I live on an island on Vancouver Island on the very west coast. And, you know, on the mainland in one of the big cities over Vancouver and, and the in the suburbs, you know, in Surrey, they have drive-by shootings almost every night. And they constantly discuss about building a bridge from the island to the mainland so that we don't have to take an hour and a half ferry ride. And all, you know, island residents are always like, no, 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 we don't want to be the backyard of that criminal activity because there is a lot of that that goes on over there. So, but I, I like the point that you made of, I think that's so important, but I think Again, because of a reactive, how people just react and they hear anything gun, they don't listen. And so I love what you said. See, I just learned something from that when you talked about that, how the difference between gun control and, and what actually that means. So see, I, I listened and I learned something new and you understand, I understand that. Right. And I think it is our responsibility to get information, not for other people to give it to us. So and that's what all of this talking is about. Now, my thing, you know, how where I've always come from, like, why is this keep going on? Why do you, you know, I'm thinking, why do the citizens, why do you allow this to keep going on? And I think one of the things I always fall back on is, you know, the Second Amendment came about at a time when the world was so much different. Life was so much different. The Second Amendment came about in like 17, you know, almost 1800. Well, life was different than now. And it's an amendment. So why can it not be amended again? And it sure can. The problem with amending it is the language. It goes back to the language. So with the language of the period when they wrote it, absolutely, it, it makes sense. The right to bear arms. If you if you dig into it even deeper, and I'm just going to pull this up so I can read it because it's it's actually pretty interesting that you bring that up because the language definitely needs to be amended, and it needs to be amended in a way that allows people to own them. However, it restricts the ability to use them. So that's I think that's where the the problem with the American people they want to get so tied up in the language of what the amendment says yet at the same time they don't want to listen like you were saying they don't want to listen to reasonable thought and understand that the the terminology used in 1775 is different than the or 1776 is different than the language used in 2017 yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's a valid, valid starting point. And what, you know, I think that, and that's the thing that always comes up, Second Amendment right, Second Amendment right. Do these people even know what that is? Do they, people that argue that, do they even know what the language of that is? Yeah, I think that's, and that's a lot that... Uh, so... That, ne that definitely needs to come come back around to is the language of that so now I, I'm, I'm looking at the wex legal dictionary this is the dictionary that every lawyer in the united states has bookcases full of these yeah. dictionaries right and, and probably you know i think this is probably the standard for if not most all legal offices in the United States, right? So according to the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to secure to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Such language has created considerable de debate regarding the amendment's intended scope. 
On one hand, some believe that the amendments phrase the right of people of the people to keep and bear arms creates an individual constitutional right for citizens of the United States. Under this individual right theory, the United States Constitution restricts legislative bodies from prohibiting firearms possession, or at the very least, the amendment renders prohibitory or restrictive regulation presumptively unconstitutional. So even the legal dictionary, what every legal... Isn't clear... You no, know, it's not. It really isn't clear. And it basically says that the government has their both hands tied behind their back and the people can can uh, read this and interpret it however they like. Yeah. So the language like the Bible clear. <laughs> <laughs> now, with that being said, like I said, I support the right to bear to own and keep and bear arms. I, I support that wholeheartedly because that is the oath that I took. I now tomorrow, if the if this amendment was changed, I will defend that as well because it was obviously it's not something that goes in, that they just came to somebody just threw it in the hat and said, "Hey, let's change this today." It doesn't work that way. Now, yeah. because the the amendment is not clear, and because they're not going to change the law tomorrow the next conversation that we need to have is how do we come up with solutions that people are going to be okay with because they're going to be able to keep and bear their arms and is going to affect both law abiding citizens and criminals because that's what Mm -hmm. starts what sparks off these powder kegs is the acts of a few affect the many. And that's the way it always seems to start off. Yeah. And then you can look at it saying, well, you know, if you lead a team and you lead a group, the well-being of the group far outweighs the rights of one. And I think that's where people come to that stance as well is, are the lives of these people that are lost, are, are they, so the right to bear arms is more important than the lives lost? And I, I, again, I think that's where a lot of people go back to, right? And so hard to say that though because there's 326 million people in the united states out of 326 million more than 50 percent of them are gun owners so to say that the needs of the uh few outweigh the need i mean the many outweighs the needs of the the many are the gun owners that's the problem that's yeah good point Good point. I think to start the conversation, like you said, the conversation and to get the language right, there has been so many um, court cases, even back in 1822, when I was doing a little bit of reading on this, 1822, I can't remember the name of the, the case, but that really, from what I could find, was the first precedent setting case when it came to that to the second amendment and there's I saw quite a few others since then and I think you know I I think because you could say well then how do we approach the whole language thing and how do we set that well those those decisions that were made based on those supreme court cases let's start there like you know start there with the language how how were these cases decided by the judges what's that language take the time to actually sit down and and maybe that's a place to start looking at that and understanding but you know what i found interesting that in 2004 george bush let um the renewal of the gun act lapse but we all know that he made a lot of his money from selling guns so that's not surprising right and there could be an argument also stated that you know, the reason why these things lapse that way is because the NRA pumps a lot of money into political campaigns, this, that, and the other. And, and we can, we can go rounds and rounds and rounds on the political aspect of it, but that's not really what we're talking about. What we're really talking about, identify a problem, you know, state the problem. What's the problem? The problem is people are dying from these mass shootings. People are dying for senseless causes. You know, somebody, upset at work goes in and can and mows down his entire office, you know, things like that. That's really what we're talking about. And here's, here's a shocker. And to uh, most people, 
all the guns, all 10 weapons that were fired in the Las Vegas uh, shooting were obtained legally through legal means. Now they were illegally changed. They, they, they had, he had made upgrades to them by making them fully automatic. All of these weapons at the time of purchase were semi-automatic weapons. So do the laws prevent that? No, no, the laws don't prevent so, that from happening. Are people legally allowed in the U.S. to buy semi-automatic weapons? Absolutely. A semi-automatic weapon, all that... See, that's what's is, fucked. Pull the tri- no, hold on. All that means is when you pull the trigger, when you release the trigger, another round enters the chamber. A semi-automatic weapon is no more dangerous than... Oh, really? A, not none or... No, it's not. Okay. Because you have to release the trigger okay. in order for the next round to come in. Now, you can do just as much damage with... with uh, uh, what, what's the word? Um, a single action weapon. You can do just as much damage with a single action weapon as you can with a full a semi-automatic weapon. In fact, right now, the world's fastest shooter shoots seven rounds per second out of a revolver that's single action versus uh, versus seven rounds per 1.8 seconds out of a semi uh, semi-automatic weapon. That is fast. Holy shit. That so is a action weapon fast as hell. Be, right. And a single action weapon can be just as dangerous as a semi-automatic and a semi-automatic can be not as dangerous as a semi or as a single action weapon. So it's yeah. the you it's it all boils down to the user. The person using the weapon is the problem, not the weapon itself. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. We had a shooting here some years back, too, in Nanaimo, which was shocking because I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, some guy went into work and, and shot. He had been fired and shot some coworkers, and that was really close to home. That was really devastating. So, you know, a little taste of, but not on the, the scale of, of, what, of what we see down in the States. My so here's another so here's another thing that comes to my mind when things like this happen is people say so this is when things like this happen see this is why we need to have the right to bear arms so that we can carry our guns on us because if we can carry guns with us then shit like this wouldn't happen but your rights haven't been taken away and you have been carrying your guns and that shit still happened so and the other so it, that argument doesn't make sense to me. And, no, it, and it, why it, is because, because for one, you're caught off guard. So having that gun protected you, nil, none. But also the average citizen isn't trained to be able to read a crowd, spot suspicious behavior. You're going around living your life. So I don't, that argument is an argument that comes up a lot. Well, the average citizen isn't psychologically prepared to take another person's life, period. And that's really what exactly they've done. There's there's a study called uh, there's a science to this called killology, just like sexology and biology and all these. It's an actual science called killology in Vietnam. One of the worst wars. And this is military trained military men and women who are trained to fire their weapon. One shot, one kill. It took 52,000 rounds before one person was shot dead. 52,000 rounds. And that's because normal law-abiding citizens, people who are never should never have to worry about taking the life of another human being, are thrown into a situation where now they're told they have to do this. They are It doesn't matter if they're in the military. It doesn't matter if they're a cop. It doesn't matter if they're a civilian. They are not prepared to take another person's life psychologically. So just owning a gun, if you say it makes you feel safer, I'm going to call bullshit because you have a higher likelihood of that gun being taken away from you and used against you than you actually have of actually using it effectively against somebody else. That is fact. Thank you. That is a studied fact. Now, with that being said, 
just because you have a gun doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be protected. There, there are people that were in crowd that had firearms on them. Guess what? Yeah. They yeah. never, never brought them to bear. They couldn't. There was no way that they could have affected the situation that happened in Las Vegas. Not any way possible. Exactly. And that's why I always, whenever I hear that argument, I, and I hear it and I see it a lot, that if I had a gun, it's a good people with a gun that will protect, you know, against bad people with guns. No, you're not prepared. And you had the best explanation for that because it doesn't make sense at all. I never bought that argument. Never bought that argument. You know, the most courageous thing that I saw happen on, and I saw this in pictures. I didn't see this firsthand, so please don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. The most courageous thing that I saw happening through photos and videos were people who were putting their bodies in the line of fire, protecting those that were already injured. Those people, that is courage. That is what what this is really about. Is the fact that. Mm-hmm people are coming together to protect others who are already injured, knowing that there's no way that they could possibly stop anything from happening to them. Should, should something horrific happen. And I want to bring up what Angela said here, because it's, it's important to, I want to be able to, to share other people's opinions and things like in comments. Um, Mm -hmm. So she says the right to bear arms just isn't worth the horrific consequences. Well, I, I, I agree with you. The right to bear arms isn't worth the horrific consequences, but the consequences didn't come from the right to bear arms. The consequences came from an individual act. So instead of blaming the tool, you have to blame the man who took action and, and created the problem. Um, uh-huh. oh, the fact that people own firearms is not enough like I said, there's over 300 million legal registered firearms in the United States. Of those 300 million registered firearms, you're talking this, you're talking less than 1%, less than 1% of the crimes committed being done with legal registered firearms. Yeah. Yeah. The other argument is you know, population, that the population is so big, you know, in Canada, our population is just over 36 million. In the United States, it's like 323 million or something like that. But in China, it's 1.3 billion. We don't see mass shootings like that in China. But you look at the landmass that they have spread that out over. You look at the landmass that 36 million people are spread over versus the landmass that 36, uh, 326 million are spread over. So when you take in consideration how close and focused our populations are, then it starts, it starts playing into it a little bit more. Um, and now I'm not saying by any means that that's an excuse for this to happen because it's no excuse. There is absolutely zero tolerance for something like this to happen ever for any country but mm-hmm. when you look when you look at las vegas for example twenty thousand people were packed into a parking lot the size that's only designated for like two thousand vehicles yeah that's a pretty tightly compact area i don't see where where um that didn't contribute to the amount of people that were killed and injured Oh, absolutely. Tributes to it. So, oh, absolutely. The so population standard, uh, when you go by population, you kind of have to look at the area, uh, you know, the area that it's spread out in. Is it right? No, it's not right. Is it, is it wrong? Not necessarily wrong. It's, it's perception is really what it all boils down to. And I don't, I don't bank everything that I think just based on population. Because here in the United States, we have problems. We have some severe problems. And those problems are causing a lot of, and and I can't remember who it was in the post that said this and brought this up. And she's absolutely spot on. 
there's the problems are creating stress. You know, the guy that goes to work, he's overstressed. He hasn't taken a day off in 32 days. And the expectations from his boss cause those stressors to, to just go through the roof. Oh, yeah. was that Stephanie Leach? I think yeah. that was Stephanie Leach. So, you know, I mean, that was a great comment. Yeah, it was a great comment. I don't, I, I'm, you know, I appreciate everything that she contributed to in, in during that post because some of the things that she was bringing up were very valid points. Some of it was a little bit uh, infuriating when when someone calls me ignorant because of my opinion. The, I'm not ignorant. I just oh, she didn't have, say that. I don't have no. She said Americans are ignorant to the fact. No, it was somebody else that said that. Okay. I don't think it was Stephanie that said that. It was someone else that had said that earlier earlier on in the thread? Yeah, well, I used the word ignorant. The well, the point I'm trying to make is no, we're not. We're not. It was an intelligent conversation, and, yeah. it, and I believe that everybody who yeah. commented had a very valid point. Does it make them all right or wrong? No, not at all. Just like the comments no. that I made, were they all right or wrong? No, they weren't. They were just my opinion. That was it. It was just mm-hmm. another angle for the conversation to go. And that's really what we need. Mm-hmm. We need to have these conversations that bring to light all the points that we're trying to make. And I think that also brings a good point that this isn't a simple issue. It's not no. a simple issue in terms of, <clears throat> well, people have these guns and we need to like, you know, have severe gun control and take the guns away. It's not that simple. And that post was, um, you know, it's much more complicated. It's the stress that people go through. It's, it's, it's the expectations. It's the responsibilities. It's life. It's life. And, you know, there's so many things that people go through. And I think that we're slightly ill-equipped uh, to deal with them because communication is so strained and, and we don't take the time to communicate. I want to share something that I learned a little bit ago that okay. might be a good tool for people, for anything. Uh, a great friend of mine, Chris Pro- Prochaka, she is, uh, she works in behavior and um, I had never heard of this tool. I'm surprised with having studied positive psychology and all these different things, like, but I guess, you know, I can't know everything, right? But she had shared this a few weeks back and some people had commented saying, oh yeah, I love that tool. And I've never heard of it. So this is the tool for anybody that's watching to help relieve stress. If you come across something, a post that highly offends you or, you know, a situation like this or where a topic is very heated or you feel like you're triggered, this is a good thing to write down. And this is something you simply say to yourself over and over and over and notice how you feel. And it's very interesting. This is a good test, a good experiment. And this is the statement. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Hmm. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. And keep saying that over and over and over. So next time you come across something that you want to have a knee-jerk reaction to, that your your belief system just wants to freaking jump on it and share your opinion, <clears throat> read that statement that you're just so triggered by and say that. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. And notice what you feel. I've had some it's been very interesting since then. But anyway, I just wanted to share that because this is a hot topic that people get so fired up about. Yeah. I like to say not my circus, not my monkeys and move on, but that's not really the right way to do things either. So I like the fact that you brought that. Not everybody can do that. (laughs) (laughs) And because we're always thinking about solutions, that's a tool that I wanted to share because for some people it's hard for them to wrap their mind around it. I think that's, you know, that's the thing. It's hard sometimes to wrap your mind around these things. Exactly. And so what are the, the solutions? So uh, I was just going to say for the last 40 minutes, we've been talking about problems and we've been talking about, you know, gun control and the terminology and this, that, and the other, and the amendment in this and how we feel about each of these things. Now, I don't believe that 
I have the best solution, but I do believe that I have a start of a solution. Now, I know that there's other people who have also agreed with this, and there's there's a lot of people who have now taken it upon themselves to share this start to the solution as well. And that's, instead of gun control, we, we start looking into gun restriction. Not necessarily restricting people from having them, but restricting people from how we use them. And how we use them now is is really based on, well, television and in how we brought how we were brought up and things like that the port authorities have amazing technologies that they use every single day to keep americans canadians mexicans safe from every from terror these these technologies include things such as sniffer uh, devices that will literally alert them to gunpowder and chemical explosives and things of that nature now, there's places that, that have the ability and the money to be able to invest in such things. As you're walking through the door, they can raise those alarms. However, in the instance that we're talking about today with Las Vegas, Sandy Cook, all the, or Sandy Hook, all these different places where people walk into a building and commit these mass tragedies, because that's what they are. They're not mass killings. They're mass tragedies because we value human yeah, life yeah. more than what they have in the past. There's no debating that. You, you can look at history and you can see the trend and how we've developed that value for human life above all else. A simple metal detector, one of those that you walk through every time you go through an airport or if you go into a government building, they're everywhere. They're not expensive and they're very easy. And this one single device would have alerted security to the fact that this man had just brought 10 assault rifles into that hotel. Is it the perfect solution? No, it's not, but it's a start to a solution. That's the way I feel about it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's gotta be, yeah, I, I think it's, people are so busy sharing their opinions and beliefs they're not leaving any room for any ideas and discussions. There's got to be something and at least try something. I think, I think that's what gets some people so exasperated with the, with these, when these things happen is try something like implement something. Um, that is a very simple thing that can be done. I like what you said about looking at the language of the amendment because you have both sides of, you know, amend the amendment and those that leave it where it is, um, you know, look at the language of it because, you know, at the beginning when you shared exactly, when you read what it was, it's not clear. And I think that a lot of the people um, that argue their second amendment right maybe aren't even clear. And, and those that want it amended aren't clear either. I think we need to, to start there, absolutely. Start with the language of the amendment. Instead of writing something in what a else? way that people that go through four years of college can understand or six years of college can understand, how about writing something that the guy that didn't finish ninth grade can understand? <laughs> it, works, it works in the military. That's how they write everything. Well, out. it's so it's vague. Grade level. It, and it is. And it, yeah. it leaves way too much room for interpretation in the, the point of the fact is these were these were amendments that were brought out now i said 1776 originally i was wrong it was 1789 when the second amendment was added to the constitution so the bill of rights that's really what it all started out our forefathers did not write the second amendment until much later when it became necessity so like you were saying amend the amendment we do have the ability to change these things and we are smart enough to be able to write this in a language that we understand today versus what they would have understood 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that small steps, it's always small steps. It doesn't have to be so radical, but at least small steps. And, and, and again, 
you know, listen to other people. This was fascinating for me. And that's why I'm so glad we did this. And because I learned from you, I learned a lot of interesting things from you about this and it helps us to understand. So there's more information that I got that I can understand about, you know, what is the language of the second amendment and what is a semi-automatic and what, you know, all of these things. And that is so valuable. And that's, you know, God, if you're watching, share this out because, and I, I still, you know, it, it doesn't make me as, I still think, why the hell do you need a gun? But, you know, but at least I understand. And that really is the, the beginning of it is to understand how people grow up and, and what that experience was and how was that belief formed and why do you think that's your right? And let's have these intelligent grown-up conversations. We're grown-ups after all. So, you know, it's like I said to you, you know, earlier, to, I support the Second Amendment. I support the right to keep and bear arms. However, I choose not to own a gun. I do not own one single firearm and I won't own a single firearm just for the simple fact that I don't believe that I need one. If something were to happen here in the United States that God forbid the civilian populations need to rise up and protect themselves from invasion or what have you, there'll be enough Cabela's in, <coughs> in gun stores opening up their doors and saying, grab them if you can, because uh, you're going to need it. <laughs> grab them if you can. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think that... Uh... Yeah, I, I think something has to be done. I mean, something's got to be done. But then I also think, too, that really, are, you know, with media and, and social media, is it, you know, are we more violent? Is it a more violent society? Have, you know, crimes gone down? It's just so hard when it's in your face all the time. And I think, God, yeah, let's talk. I don't think the stuff has gone away. It's not going to go away. I don't think that uh, crime has gone down. It's just shifted. Um, one year there may be more rapes and killings. One year they have more killings and robberies. It's it's not that crime has gone away. It's not that violence has gone away. It just it shifts. It just takes a different form. Right now we're mm -hmm. in a trend. Mass shootings seem to be... And I gotta hate to say it the way the, the way I'm gonna say this, but mass shootings seem to be the popular way to take yourself out because that's what's happening to all these people. They don't have the courage to face the consequences of their decisions. That is the thing that infuriates me the most is the fact that these people turn it on themselves and they take their own lives rather than facing the consequences of their actions. And I think that is probably the thing that gets most people upset and either uh, taking one side yeah. versus the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no way to, there's it's crazy. No way to blame. The, the, the person that's responsible isn't there to stand trial, isn't there to, to face the consequences. Everybody has to point the finger somewhere and it goes right back to the problem that we were discussing right now. Mm hmm and, you know, it's so interesting because I, you know, watching some news today, popping in here and they're watching the news and you see, and we still don't know, we're trying to figure out what the motive is. And I'm thinking, what the fuck does that matter? What the motive is? Is that going to change anything? Is it going to add to a solution? Is it going to change the way? Is it going to, you know, it's business as usual. I mean, what does it matter what the motive is? You will never fully know what the motive is. We've tend it's there t the focus tends to be on the wrong thing, and you know what? I think people are kind of done with thoughts and prayers. Yeah, yeah, it, you, it's like uh, thoughts and prayers are great, cool, but yeah, come on, it's it's, it's not gonna, it's you know, it's like when it's not when, solution focused. It's like when we came back. I, I'm a veteran. I served overseas all that kind of good stuff. I, I fought in a military combat, you a combative unit. I carried a weapon every day for 18 months. And here, here's the thing folks, just because 
you have one just because it's there doesn't necessarily mean it's going to keep you any safer. It doesn't. The mm -hmm. only way that that gun is going to keep you safe is if you are lucky enough to have the round impact your weapon before it hits you. That's it. That's the only way that that gun is going to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I think, uh, I think I've spread enough of my, uh, uh, around. So why don't you <laughs> take us out of this and let everybody know how they can reach us. And I want everybody, <clears throat> whenever you're watching this, contribute to the conversation. I mean, I think it helps. I think it helps us to process. So you, you know, go ahead and leave the comments and share this out. If you want to uh, learn more about us and find all the different ways that we're available, past shows, if you, in case you missed them, or you want to stay, you know, in the loop for future shows that come out because we are three days a week now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday nights. You can find all the information on our website at gritandgracetv.com. You can find us all the ways that we'll you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can uh, also find us in audio only if you like to take us with you because we like road trips too. So check that out. And if you've in watched any of our episodes and you like and you think we're fantastic and <laughs> we'd love a review on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Facebook.com forward slash grit and grace TV. Please leave us a review because that does help us. Um, you know, those magical little wizard Facebook, they do like those reviews and it helps us. And if you have any show suggestions, you have a comment or you have a question, you can also leave that through our website as well. You can click on the uh, comment or questions tab and check out our show resources page because there are some things there. So, you can go back in time and download some great things. Absolutely. And it's never been more appropriate than it is tonight. And it's like I always say, you don't have to be perfect to be that perfect solution. Mm -hmm. Peace. Stay wild, everybody. <laughs>